My family's disowned me. My dad, he was the person that beat us into line. I remember I was playing with this curtain, pretending like the little dome was the head and the tassels were the hair. And I remember getting caught with it and being dragged in front of my whole family in the living room, being like exposed for what I was doing. And I just remember feeling like what I'm doing is wrong. Like I have to feel ashamed towards what I'm doing. Can we take a second, sorry? <laughs> My name is Alia Ramna. I am 20 years old. Me and my family, we haven't spoken. It's coming up to seven years of not speaking. I am a trans woman. My is she her? When I did transition, I lost like everyone. Ever since I was young, they've always like started conditioning me. Conversion therapy isn't just like an appointment you can just book in. Are uh, being taught from a young age or from whenever you come out that your feelings and the way, that the way you feel is wrong, and that the devil is inside of you, and that you need to pray away how you truly feel and how you truly are. I went to this mosque in Birmingham. They need people to go to these imams to talk about their feelings so that they could start praying so that, you know, when the day of judgment does come, that they're not put in hell. And exactly the words to say in um, the Quran and scriptures to look at for praying away the gay. At home, I had no break from it. Growing up in Lahore, Karachi, and also in Cardiff here. Yeah. Religion was a very big part of my life. I was going to the mosque every single day. My dad, he just literally just wanted to keep up appearances at mosque. He prays and goes to Jamma and has the front of a good Muslim man. To me, he was literally just like someone who was an imam who was there to teach me how to pray and how to be a good Muslim. And if I wasn't doing that, he was the person that beat us into line. When we heard his car pull up on the driveway and we'd be running to the pray mats because we were like, if we were not seen on the pray mats, we'd be getting the beats. There's a lot of anxiety. And I remember feeling that for years, like just always hearing the car and just running and just like, praying and like just having that fear installed into me from someone who was supposed to be my father and I'm still numb from it. Every Ramadan, every single Eid, every single time I would put my hands together to pray, I'd always pray that the next day I'd wake up as a girl and that I would like swap bodies or like my brain would swap and my soul would swap whenever we would have a party or a birthday party. We would, they'd always expect us to be separated and gender. So I would just like, separate myself from that gender too because I was not a part of that. <laughs> I went and hid in the bathroom and I made my own dolls out of strings and things like that and tissue papers because that's how I kill time and how I live my fantasy in my head. I would get exposed for it, telling my mom that I'm acting feminine, that they need to start straightening me out, keep an eye on me because like, you know, I'm not like a normal boy or whatnot. I had a lot of physical violence as well as um, verbal violence at me. Um, I have scars on my body. Being a child, like, my parents couldn't even see, like, the moral thing of, like, you know, scarring me. And I just remember feeling like, okay, like, what I'm doing is wrong. Like, I have to feel ashamed towards what I'm doing. I listened and I gave it a shot for a good like three years like I really really gave it a good go I will hide my true self away for my family because it's all I have and it's all that I ever had I started like to play into that boy character and then I started self-harming whenever I self-harmed I saw it as a way of slashing at the gayness or slashing at the femininity that was in me my arm is like quite messed up from like self-harming. I butchered my arm and used it as like a chew toy. I had moments where I was going back and forth in between like being straight and like being like myself and like being the vision they want me to be. When I did the start expressing it a little bit more in school, I remember it was like the littlest thing. I had like a shoulder strap back and um, I started wearing it like this, like on my arm, and it was the worst thing I ever did. Got like ridiculed for it. Not just in school, not just in mosque, but at home as well. With my dad, he, 
He only really got involved until something big and serious happened. And when I did start wearing my arm like that with my shoulder bag, uh, he really started to pay attention and get into it and be like, realize that, okay, I do not want a gay son or a feminine son. I told my mom my truth and she obviously told my dad and like my family members and like the mosque and whatnot started to go in a bit heavier and it started to be a bit more crazy. Literally like every angle I was, I went to, I was being conditioned because religion was all around me. Like in school, a mosque, a home, I had no break from it. I was like giving up all hope to the point where I had suicide clocks on my birthdays, where every birthday that would come up, I would try and commit suicide because I didn't want to live another year as a boy. My 14th birthday, my 15th birthday, my 16th birthday, all trying to like commit suicide and having plans to commit suicide and just being so scared about my genetic body clock changing and seeing the changes of turning into a male. It's just so terrifying for me. And I remember telling my mum that like I'd literally rather would pass on into the next life than be a male. And she was, um, yeah, just keep telling me scriptures and telling me to pray away these feelings and telling me that I'm going to have such a happy life if, if I do stay a boy. Me and my mum, we had this pact. So at the time I was self-harming a lot. I was finding things online to like prove to her why being trans is not a sin. She was like, okay, I'll have a deal with you. If you go and see this gender specialist, I'll go and talk to the imam in Birmingham that she wanted me to go and see. Me and the gender specialist, we talked without my mum in the room and was like, you're not gonna do it in hell. Like, you know, there's services here that can help you. There's therapists and there's also medication that can help you transition. And it, it gave me hope because of my self-harming and whatnot. My school involved social services. The social services wasn't involved to the point where they took me out of the house until I turned 16. So I knew that if the police came to the house and they said, we found your child in the school not wanting to come home, when the police left after my parents backed it or Koshi with them, I would get the beats from what they would say. And I remember like specifically like explaining to them that like I don't want them to come to the house and having to deal with their beats. When I first went into care, for me, the first step was like wearing extensions and like just dressing a little femininely. There's a broader world that I know that I've been guarded from because of religion. Is there anything, if you could say one thing to him, that you would ever want to say? Me and my dad, I don't think that I would ever, ever, ever forgive him. If I ever did get a chance to sit down and chat with him, I would not take that because I don't want my blood to boil for him to see how badly he's messed me up. It is a privilege of getting to know me, you know, and he will never have that and experience that. I really saw like it either going two ways, with me living this life and continuing to be someone who I'm not, or being free and being who I want to be. And yeah, it might be hard, but I'd be like ultimately myself and like feel true happiness. Just all those things that like can victimize me. I like chose to like completely forget about that and just really realize that the liberation that comes from me, the clawing and peeling and just working to be myself. And now that it's finally reflected in the mirror, like I have nothing to hide because it's such a beautiful thing.